Hi there, and welcome to my Brain Health Cooking Kitchen. I'm Diana Liz, and today I'm preparing herring with apples in a yogurt sauce, and I will be serving it with purple potato stokes. The recipes that I present are quick, easy, delicious, affordable, and neurotrophic. This means they support brain health. Fish was not always a part of, of my life. Um, fish was eating fish sticks on Fridays uh, during Lent. Uh, when I graduated from college, it was um, going to my favorite restaurant, Lombardi's, and having red snapper. But that was only on rare, very special occasions. And um, fish just was not part of my diet until I entered the Institute of Functional Medicine coaching program. And it became even more important when I studied the Dale Bredesen protocol for the reversal of cognitive decline and the prevention of Alzheimer's. Why is fish so important? Well, uh, omega-3 is one of the most important ingredients um, in fish that we can provide for our brain. It's just critical for brain health. And we can get ALA, which is a plant source of omega, but we're, the body has to convert it into DHA and EPA, and um, the majority of it is lost in the process. So this is why fish is so important. In the Institute of Functional Medicine, I learned the acronym SMASH. S for salmon, A for anchovies, M for mackerel, S for sardines, and H for herring. These are five fish that are low in mercury and high in omega-3. A very small serving of fish is what we're talking about. We're talking about two to three and a half ounces. So I have gotten some pickled herring and all you have to do is spoon it out of the jar. It's also very high in vitamin D and vitamin D is just uh, another essential vitamin uh, for us. So this uh, recipe, uh, I took six recipes and studied them closely and selected and modified ingredients so that it would be the most nutrient dense and that it would be helpful for Paul's MTHFR and my COMP-T gene SNP. I learned about a COMP-T back in uh, 2018 when I was uh, studying the Dale Bredesen protocol. And I, I didn't understand the significance until a couple of months ago uh, when I was doing research to support Paul and found the COMP-T and remembered that it was part of my genetic test. And today I know that I'm at high risk for Parkinson's in addition to being at risk for Alzheimer's. And Paul is at high risk for Alzheimer's. And we do not wait until we have symptoms. If you wait till you have symptoms, it would be very, very difficult to reverse. So if you know that you are in the high risk category, you can look at your life and what you've eaten all your life and the exercise you've done and the sleep you've gotten and uh, look at your blood work. You can assess if you are at high risk or low risk. This is important if you look at your genes and some genes put you at higher risk for certain diseases. This recipe has uh, got lots of things in it for comp tea. It's got uh, radishes, it's got um, uh, dill in it, and carrots, and fennel, which is, uh, is a superfood. The Metagelin uh, Foundation rates foods, and this is a superfood. And of course it has yogurt. I'm not going to be using uh, cows and sheep yogurt. And I'm, I'm on previous of my podcast, I have talked about the benefits of sheep yogurt and goat yogurt over cow's yogurt. But today I'm gonna to be using an oat milk non-dairy yogurt that I found and it tastes okay. I was very pleased to see that. I'm not gonna be using whipped cream. Instead, I'm going to be using a probiotic sour cream. Uh, I'm always looking for different kinds of probiotics. And I was very glad to see that this particular 
oat milk yogurt does not have the same probiotics that my sheep and yogurt and goat yogurt uh, have. So I'll be getting different probiotics. And we know this from the work of Tim Spector that getting a variety of foods and a variety of um, micronutrients is really, really the most important thing for our health. We know that there is not one brain diet that works for everyone. Since the ancient Ayurveda and Chinese medicine have both studied and identified body types that certain foods are good for this type of person and these foods are better for this kind of person. And but modern medicine got away from that. A naturopath named Peter uh, de Adamo dedicated his life's work to identifying this and he published Eat Right for Your Blood Type. So this is another thing that we need to keep. So we have blood type, we have the genetic needs, and uh, then we have our preference. When I started this journey, I, I explained that I did not eat um, fish except on very special occasions. Today, we strive to eat fish two to four times per week. And this has been a big shift and one that did not happen all at once. Um, and I have been exploring recipes and looking for affordable ways to consume uh, the fish that's needed. You know, it'd be great if we had uh, herring fillets, but here in West Texas, that's just, it, even if it were available, it probably would be too expensive. So this is pickled herring out of a jar. So the recipe starts with a peeled carrot. And I, the first thing I did is I did not peel the carrot. I don't want to remove fiber and nutrition. So there's the carrots and it's however many you want to eat. Um, if you don't like carrots a lot, um, you know, sometimes we have to learn to enjoy foods and experiment on how we can enjoy them. Carrots are really good for anyone who carries the comp tea gene snip, especially if you're a woman. It's very, very important. Okay, so the next thing we have um, is dill pickles. And we love dill pickles in our house. So I added one whole dill pickle and that might be more than what you like. You can adjust it. Uh, the next thing I did is I have a half an apple. I did not add as much apple as the recipe called for. A quarter of an apple is probably enough for Paul and I. And of course, I did not remove the peeling and it is organic. Apples are number five on the environmental working group, Dirty Dozen. So apples, uh, if at all possible, should be purchased organic. So there's half an apple. And uh, let's see, we add uh, the radishes. The radishes were on some recipes and not others. And I added quite a bit of them. I added two small radishes because um, they're really good for my comp tea. So here we go. Now, uh, the rest, none of the recipes call for fennel, but fennel is a superfood and it has a lot of fiber and uh, getting a 14 to 15 grams of fiber per day is a real challenge. And fennel gives you that, and it's very, very high in vitamin C, even though it doesn't look like anything that might be uh, have vitamin C, it's extremely high in vitamin C. And um, so here goes the fennel. I, I didn't uh, uh, chop it, I shaved it um, to make it really, really fine uh, slices and this way it will just disappear into the recipe. So unless you are a chef with a cultivated palate, you probably won't even taste it, especially with the dill, with the radishes and the dill pickles. Uh, it will just disappear into the recipe, adding fiber and nutrition. Oh, and also has molly dunham. And that is another nutrient that we typically are low in that is super important. Now, like I said, I am not adding uh, whipped cream, but I am adding sour cream. And a serving size is two tablespoons. 
This is not a beautiful white color. It um, looks like oats. And I'm gonna measure one cup. Some of the re recipes called for horseradish and some of the recipes did not call for horseradish. In my family, we love horseradish, so I added one teaspoon. This is prepared horseradish and it needs to be stirred in. Now I'm going to drain the fish and bring it back. That's it, no cooking, it's over. <laughs> It's that easy. Just add the ingredients. Um, you can substitute um, only one recipe called for apples. And apples are once again a very nutrient dense fruit. And it adds a, a delightful um, taste to the recipe. So uh, we, I've tried it different ways. I've tried it with apples and without apples. And my vote is for apples. And you can decide what you like. And I'd be pleased to hear what, what if you do this recipe, uh, what changes you make. So I'm going to place this in the refrigerator uh, until we're ready to have dinner. One of the things that is taught in the Institute of Functional Medicine is to eat from the rainbow. Anytime that you see color, you see nutrition. So when you see a white potato or a purple potato or a... Um, sweet potato that's orange, you're seeing different nutrients and color is preferred to a white. A purple potato, potato contains um, more potassium and this is important because it helps reduce blood pressure. Uh, it's also packed with antioxidants. We know that because of the color. Uh, it helps with healthy levels of cholesterol and if you uh, cook it and let it cool and do not reheat it, it increases resistant starch. And resistant starch is very important because it, we eat the potato for us, but the resistant starch is there for the microbes in our intestinal system. And so the resistant starch feeds the 39 trillion microorganisms that live and work in our body to create our health. So uh, I'm not going to heat this again, and I'm not going to add butter. Uh, it's, it's delicious, it's juicy, it's tender, um, it's just cooked just right. And I am going to add a medley of nuts. Paul and I are both very thin, and the Brain Health Diet uh, promotes weight loss, and we cannot afford to eat, eat lose any more weight, as you can see. So um, we tend to eat, uh, add nuts, and because nuts are hard to digest, um, I soak them overnight, and I do, um, I buy a big bag of almonds and big bag of walnuts, soak them, soak one overnight, put it in the dehydrator, soak the next one overnight, put it in the dehydrator. And this makes it easier for us to digest the quantity of nuts that we consume. Uh, let's see, um, purple potatoes are also extremely <clears throat> high in polyphenols. They keep, and this is important because it helps keep our blood sugar from spiking. One of the reasons that I avoided all potatoes until I found this research um, in information, I avoided all potatoes for years because I was afraid they would spike my glucose and spiking glucose leads to problems with blood sugar and insulin, and that results in diabetes, and diabetes results in Alzheimer's. So to cut it, um, so I stopped eating all potatoes, but perfect potatoes have nutrition, and nutrition is what's important. So herbs are small, but they're powerful, and I'm adding dill. I'm also adding the chopped prawns from the fennel, and I'm going to sprinkle this The recipe also called for chives, and chives are hard to find and pricey. And so uh, on occasion, I will splurge um, 
for the chives, but most times I opt to just use the tops of green potatoes. So I'm adding that as well. And I'll bring this over to see. There we go. And I'll be serving this with a side salad. Some of the recipes called for rye bread, and I would absolutely love to serve this on rye bread. It would just make all the difference in the world. But I, I was at the grocery store and I read each recipe and there's just too much stuff in the, re in, in the recipes that I don't recognize as food. I don't understand what it is. Um, and, you know, it has a long, long list. Every bre bread ingredients that I picked up had just, um, and it started off with canola oil. And I do not eat uh, anything with canola oil or vegetable oil because they are toxic to the brain. And it's unfortunate that almost all the products that are prepared have um, canola oil and or vegetable oil. I hope that you will try this recipe or that you will experiment with herring. It is a great contribution to brain health. So bon appetit for a brighter brain. Uh, I, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe and support my efforts to spread the word on how we can turn regular meals into nutritious neurotrophic meals.